We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy, and this is not the Wizard of Oz. I'm out with John from the fish locker, who you'll all know. And if you don't know, now you know. And he's brought me here. Look at the state of this. I don't know if it picks it up on the camera, but it is crystal clear like the Bahamas, mate. It's stunning. Can we see where we are, John? We can't really, can we? North coast of Cornwall. We're on the north coast of Cornwall, and that's all you're getting. I've got my new fins, new wetsuit top. I look like I forgot my PE kit. Let's get down there, see what we can get. There he goes, look. Trepid Explorer. Like a billy goat. It's gonna be harder going back up, I'll tell you that much for now. And look at these cliffs. And John tells me that they, these are the old pasty mines of Cornwall, uh, where they used to mine their... Uh, pure unrefined pasty. Pure unrefined pasty, not even cut. So yeah, look at the absolute majesty of it. And we're gonna head around this little headland so that no one can steal our underpants while we're in water. And, uh, and hopefully you won't get cut off because if you remember what happened last time, roll clip. This look, I've sort of got myself stranded down here so we're having to use this fancy pulley system of a rope attached to our stuff. And I'm filming it just in case something goes horrifically wrong. It's working. It's a bit like Murphy's Law, apart from it's called the Hayes Effect. Come on, lad, you can do it. Hey, Paul, you've forgotten something. You're gonna have to go back, you've forgotten something. <laughs> now he's winding you up. We don't want a repeat of that. Oh, a little shark purse. Bullhouse eggs, yeah. Bullhouse eggs. Great spotted cat shark eggs. And what sort of beef have you got with Bullus? <laughs> you won't have seen that in my video. <laughs> All right, well, it's a nice little uh, advertisement, isn't it? Yeah, in another video, I mentioned that if you ever get the opportunity to wrestle with like a double figure Bullus underwater, possibly think twice about it. <laughs> I, have, I have like bite marks on my thighs where it just completely dominated me. John sent me the footage of him just wrestling with a, wrestling with a shark. So if you want to see John wrestling with an actual shark in British waters, Go subscribe to his channel, link below. The one thing you don't want to leave behind is your weight belt because it's well heavy and I left it up there on top of the cliff so I've just had to run up in, <laughs> in wetsuit pants, mate. Warm, to say at least, warm. So I'm just going to sit and catch my breath a little bit because I don't want to get out there and be all overexcited. So I'm going to just uh, get a bit zen, take on board some water and then go out and see John in big blue. Big turquoise, by the looks of things. Get me in there now, boiling hot. John has stealthily come up behind me and all I'm going to say, right, all I'm going to say is thank God he didn't get me on bingo wing again because look at this. And I'd like to say it was an absolute battle but as far as extractions go, straightforward. This one was really straightforward. For folks that don't know much about this, he's a male. Yeah. Two things that stand out straight away as a male is by the size of these claws. I mean, his, his claws are as big as my hands. And Look at that. Beautiful colours. You can tell by the tail as well. A female of this size, her what? tail would be that wide. He's probably 40 years old. 40 years old. Look at that man. Big boy. He's of that an age that I don't think that we can keep him. I think he's too big. We're going to take him and put him back where you got him? Get a photo of him when we'll take him back. Yeah. yeah. Okie dokie. See the difference between the claws there, can't you? It's got, oh. got a crunching claw and a cutting claw. Yeah. I mean, if someone comes past, he'll get rid of it with this one. Crunch it and kill it, and use the, the serrated one <laughs> to cut it up. Look at him. I was worried that John was going to get me on bingo wing, a la last time. Q clip. For those of you. Oh, I can't believe I'm holding the camera still. <laughs> right on bingo wing. Oh, <laughs> that really hurt me. 
Ow! Did it go through the suit? No. Well, there you go. That's going to scar. That's going to bleed. I'm bleeding. I'm medic. I oh, wish I'd recorded that. <laughs> that. That really hurt, like. <laughs> right, so that's a first. That <laughs> Nipped by a lobster on bingo wing. Hold on. Let me get me composure because I was going to say something there before that happens. Did she just grab me or did you do that on purpose? <laughs> I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll overlay a little photo of the damage that that's done now. See? Uh, I'm going to get saddled up. We're going to get him back in sea so he doesn't suffer any more than he needs to um, get some photos with him. See what else we can pull out. So here I am, hugging this rock like some sort of underwater Rambo, admiring the wrasse. I never wanted to shoot it, it was just having a look at it with camera. And as I creep round this rock, as you'll see, I come face to face with a bass. I can see it in the distance now. I let it go on its side, I take the shot, and uh, I've left the safety on. Absolute muppet, underwater muppet. So that's my bad. And this was the last deep-ish dive that I did because I was struggling to equalise uh, in one ear and it was wrecking. It felt like my head was going to pop. So I decided not to do any deep diving and took to the shallows to see what I could find. Right, I'm out. Tongue is absolutely mullered. Some all salt. I think we've been in for about three hours. Uh, it was just fuck. It was just lovely to be back in sea. The visibility was was changing. I had a bass in my sights, a keeper. You'll have seen that on the film. Went to press trigger. Safety was on. Then it just bolted. Get away! I'm always nervous around bingo wings, as you'll know. Uh, and then I had a shot at one as I was coming in, and I missed. So still. But, I'll tell you what, you're honest about it. Hey. You're honest. I'm honest, there I am, honest. And then John has saved the day. Unfortunately, the pair of us, just as we were coming up to this, which is right at the end, wasn't it? I thought my hands were freezing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is just a... Mm, a better sized one. Yeah. Male. Yeah, male. The other one was just too big. It's, this one is about... Yeah, about 100 mil. Yeah. yeah. What's the two little white dots underneath that say it's a male? That one and that one. Look like it's nuts. And they're not it's nuts, are they? Because they don't have nuts, do they? <laughs> Lobster bollocks. These days, I don't know, you've got to be Keep... careful about what you say, don't you? Hey, not on my channel, you don't. Alright. Wee! You can say lobster bollocks. This is a male lobster. It's a male lobster. I don't know if they have bollocks or not, do they? <laughs> I don't know, we don't. Do, do we need to have this conversation <laughs> off camera? Has, has your mum and dad not had the birds and bees talking? The lobsters and crabs. When a mummy lobster and a daddy lobster love each other very much, right? Yeah. Armour plated bollocks is this what he's. This is a male lobster. He's got armour plated bollocks, is what he's saying. Yeah. I'm real nervous around him because he bingo winged me, didn't he? So, yeah. It's a keeper anyway. Yep, definitely. We've deemed it not worthy of going all the way back up to the car, getting the, the stuff to make a fire, and cooking just that up and sharing it. So, we're going to go and hit another mark and see if we can add to the pot. Three cornered leeks. Good eating. The smell. The smell is lovely. And uh, you can tell they're three cornered leeks because guess what? What? Three corners on them. Lovely wild edible and lots of them. Loads of them. There's also some Alexanders. They're edible. And this is a, uh, it's like a bramble stick, but if you marinate that in a Oxo cube for overnight, I'd say, and then put that in a baguette, you're happy days. Right, we've come to a second location. We've just chewed our way, uh, our way down a cliff, brought my weight belt. We don't think we've forgot anything this time. Conditions are looking pretty good. You reckon, John? John reckons we might be onto a spider if we're lucky. 
I'll probably get bit by it, but we'll see. The spider crab. Healthy looking creature there. Yeah, we're looking for a bit twice that size. Right, okay. Happy days, good sign. How tight goggles were, mate. Permanent goggle on. <sighs> right, we're in there for quite a while there, mate, and uh, it wasn't very fishy. There weren't many fish on going. Visibility wasn't of a clever. Spider crabs everywhere. We chose a decent size one. We had a couple, but they were just too heavy for me to to drag them. <laughs> we, uh, Dragging him on my float, it was like having an anchor on back of me, mate. Couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it, so we oiled one. And we've got one. We've got one for, to, for a cook up to go with our lobster from earlier. I can't even talk, man. I'm absolutely knackered. We went right round to the, uh, another headland over there, and then on the way back, the tide was against us. And I had that big crab on back. <laughs> He's saying, hurry up and come on. He's saying hurry up. He's saying hurry up, so I better hurry up. Right, I'll see you back at fire. We're just going to do this really simply because Paul is worried that we're going to get cut off by the tide. I'm not. BT dub. By the way, I'm not. I'm a, I can climb like a mountain goat, but yeah. Smelling like a mountain goat. <laughs> right, so, got a bit of a fire going. All we're doing is we're going to build up a bed of coals. We're going to cook all of these in a bed of coals. This crab is already on his way back to the sea. We have a spider crab and Mr. Lobster from earlier. All I'm going to do is, as the fire is dying down to a bit of coals, I'm going to butcher those off, and break them all up. I'm going to wrap them in tin foil with a bit of butter, a bit of rock sand fire. I'm going to try and steam some of the sea beet and some of these allium, some of these three cornered leek. Right, happy days. And we've foraged this wood and it looks perfectly cut. Well done. John's battened all that down. It's taken him ages. It's just off cuts from the fish locker workshop. Yeah, well, that's good then. Crab pot bottoms, bird boxes, all that type of stuff. All the little projects that me and James make. When the last ones were made, I made him like a load of sh shields and swords and a lance and all sorts. Yeah. yeah. We were uh, <laughs> well, we started off being medieval knights and then he became like Megatron. And Jedi knight, you're still no, stuck in Stone Age. We were Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. There splinters all upside the head where he's been battling the... <laughs> That's good shit, that like. Good shit. Good wholesome shit. They are difficult to handle just because their there's shells are so spiky and hard. Most of the meat that you'll find inside one of these is inside these hoofing claws in all the legs and inside the knuckles inside of there. Now this is a male, you can tell it's a male just because of the sheer size of its claws. The easiest way to dispatch these guys is you simply lift up this apron and put the knife in. So lift up and go straight in there. That's it. There, he's, he's, he's no longer of this earth. Well just look, he's just so floppy now. And now he That's feels. It. He's out. He's gone. Now, there is a second way that you can do it, but it's, it's hard to get it right. And all you do is you hold on to them all at the same time, knock it on the edge of a rock, and flip his whole back off. Yeah. Now, all I'm going to do now is just separate the back of the apron and then peel the whole back off. Right. Yummy. A quick bit of anatomy. That's most of his digestive system in there. These bits on the sides here, called dead man's fingers, these are the gills. We'll take those off. Those are the gonads, more of the guts. Now, some cultures, some, some folks, like to eat the internal organs. I'll never advise to eat the internal organs because any harmful bacteria or chemicals or anything that this crab has ingested in its life 
have been scientifically proven to be concentrated in its internal organs. The eat dead rotting matter, that's all going to be in there as well. I'll wash all that out. So we'll take these off, we'll wash that out, and then we'll come back to it. John's just washing his spider crab at sea there, look. I'm tired, mate. Sorry for low energy, I'm just absolutely knackered from days of just camping and mucking about in the sea. It takes it out of you. All I've done is I've just washed out all the insides, there's none of the goods left. And that was there where I went in with a knife to clip. And all you need to do with that is it's got natural seam in it. Just break it to two pieces. That's it completely butchered off. You can keep this if you wanted to, wash all the insides out. And if you pick the meat, put it into there as a bowl. But we're not going to use this. Everything that we're discarding, everything that we're not going to eat, is all going to be returned to the sea. So none of it goes to waste because it goes straight back into the ecosystem. All the little crabs and blennies and gobies, they'll all pick through it and they'll have a feed as well. It's a bit of a contentious subject about dispatching lobsters. Because some people will say that it can just stab straight into the top of the head. Lobster's biology, lobster's nervous system, isn't like what well, you consider like a mammalian one, being that there's one single point where you can cut it off, like with the spinal cord. They've got 12 ganglia, consider their nervous system like a web, like a net over their whole body. So unless you're going to cleave it completely in half, like what I'm going to do now, there's no real way to put it out straight off. I will warn you that if, if you're a little bit squeamish, this might be a little bit graphic for you. These are all the internal organs. This is its intestine line that runs all the way down its back. So you'll want to scoop this out because that's basically its poop line. We'll scoop that out. I'll scoop out all of this that's inside the head for the same reason as the spider crab. Once I've cleaned it up, then we're ready to get wrapped in tin foil. All I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of butter in there with them. You can put anything you want, you could put some chilli, some garlic, any whatever flavours you want. I'm going to try one with a little bit of rock samphire and some three-cornered leek. Perfect. Citrusy and oniony garlicky. And all that'll do when you wrap it up is it'll all steam with whatever juices it's got in there. I mean, your wrapping skills. You, I was just going to say, can you tell our wrap all our Christmas presents? <laughs> That's the all you need to do is you just need to remember which way is up. Aye. And I try to, like to, leave a little tiny bit to pick them up with. Because otherwise, if I was smart enough, I would have probably brought some gloves with me. But considering that I aren't... Well, you know, you're good in other ways, aren't you? I We're still, like to think still so. trying to fathom that out, but... Right, there's one, that's how we do it, lobsters. Let's have a go on spider crab. What I like, so we, we're, have, we're gonna be eating a feast here. It's gonna be an absolute culinary delight. But what I like to make my food a little bit better is the risk, potential risk of drowning. So we've got the tide constantly coming in as we're prepping to eat and we'll be eating. So we're sort of against the clock, aren't we? This could be a game show, actually. You gotta get up. No, it couldn't be a game show. See you later. Imagine Forsyth down here. Aye, big Brucey. Aye, you gotta get it done before the tide comes in, lads. A little bit of that in there. Some green, sandy greens. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I wash just greens? Just a little bit of crunch, just exactly the same. All I've done is I've given the big claws a bit of a knock with a rock. Put some butter on there, a couple of sprigs of rock samphire, and I've put some sea beet in there to try and steam that as well. And I'm gonna try and wrap this up gently without piercing the tinfoil. <laughs> Which, given a spider crab's anatomy, is going to be quite hard. We didn't have enough coals to cook them both at the same time, so we just elected to do the crab and then the lobsters. The lobsters not going to take as long as the crab either. But come and have a look at this here. This is the money shot. Oh, look at steam coming off it. Smells delicious. And this just been steamed. Wrap that back up and open them all up at once. Oh, it smells amazing. Oh, look at that. It does smell amazing, that. There you go. And after a few hours in sea, it doesn't have filled up an appetite. Yeah, it's good. Oh, 
where you're going to sit. Sit me on knee. Right. Got some wow. What are you going in with? Look at that! It's just red hot. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay, keen to have a bit of this. I just need some. I've used all the butter. I should have brought twice as much butter. To go over top after. Just to just look at the top. Look at that! Cheers, Cheers. mate. Nice. Ah. Mm. Look at that. All this white sea is coming in. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. I've not cooked and eaten spider crab on here before. So I want to just tell you what it tastes like. Look at all that meat there. No. Sweet, tender, buttery, perfect. Mm. Battery's going, so we're just going to end up, we're going to finish this while we polish off these crustaceans. <laughs> and what, look how fat tide's coming as well. For this one, we'll close it. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always, mate, as always. Go follow John. I'll leave all links below. If you don't already, go and check it out. Uh, I'll put a link for his second channel as well, uh, Fish Locker Workshop downstairs as well. Go check them both out if you like this sort of stuff. And take care. Thanks for watching. Au revoir. <laughs>